The shape of them specifically is something that really reminded me of something that I saw from Zara Home for like $450 per chair. However, the color is not necessarily what I'm looking for, but I figured I may be able to reupholster them. However, I do not have a sewing machine here, and I guess that makes it more DIY friendly for you guys, um, but I'm willing to accept the challenge. Now, I would love to do these chairs in like a boucle or a Sherpa type fabric. We'll have to see what we find at the fabric store. There's only one fabric store where I am, so. Off we go to the fabric store. So I just got back from the fabric store and I don't know, I've been thinking about it on my drive home. I just don't know whether I got the right type of fabric. I think maybe I made a mistake, but let's see. Hmm. Now actually seeing this laid out on the chair, I just feel like I just picked up the wrong type of fabric for this project. There's no other fabric that was similar to Boucle at the fabric store that I have locally. I did see a company called Tonic Living that sells boucle online. Okay, so my new fabric is here. This is so nice. You can just tell that this is made for upholstery. Now just to compare that, the other one from Tonic Living is just another level of quality. So I'm just so thankful that I have it. Let's get started. Easy as that. Now I'm going, I think, to like take off the bottom piece. Let me grab my screwdriver. While I am doing this entire project, I am also at the same time going to be answering some Q and A's. Okay, so the first question is, do you have a degree in interior design or any formal training? I don't have a degree in interior design. I'm not a professional. <laughs> Okay, so I just removed the last staple that's holding this black piece on, and underneath it, guess what? There's just more staples. <laughs> so much of your time and energy went into making over the apartment. This was my last apartment. Was it worth doing, especially since you had to return everything to the original state? It was 100% worth it because every Part of customizing it really pushes me to think more creatively. I have spent years working in corporate where I don't have to think in that way at all ever. Practice for me at the same time, it's kind of like developing my brain and because I didn't go to formal school for what I'm doing, every project that I'm doing and everything that I did in my last apartment was kind of like on the job training except my real life in my real space. So I hope that that makes sense. literally tired <laughs> from pulling out staples. My arm is tired and my hand is tired from using this tool. Is that all of them? That's all of them, okay. So there's actually one staple somewhere. I don't know where, it flung off. That seems like a safety hazard, you know? All the other ones are safely in this Tupperware. Found it. There's a layer of batting. Hmm, how do I feel about that? I have no idea how this thing is constructed. It seems like quite stuck. Why though? I don't know. I see, I see, I see, I see. Hmm, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Okay, so I realized the way that this is constructed is super interesting. The top piece is connected to a piece of fabric here. So I think I just need to cut. I, there's like a bunch of staples here, but I think I'm just gonna cut. So um, this is also the perfect time to answer a very commonly asked question. Where did my husband and I meet and how long have we been together? We actually met in school. We went to the same university. We're in the same program. We have been together for seven, or eight years. Come on. Those pieces that I cut are now like pulling through, which is good. Boom, boom. The reason I'm not like cutting off the gray fabric is because what if like this doesn't work out and I need to like put the gray fabric back so that at least I have the gray chairs. <laughs> Okay, so I think I ran into a problem. <laughs> I had this idea to like put these tack strips along the edges and that's how I would do the no-sew. But I guess that only works if the chair that you're working with is like wood, like the base of it. And it looks like, from what I can tell, the outside base is actually metal. Which means I'll have nothing to staple the tack strips into. And that would have given it like this perfect concealed edge. So yeah, that's not gonna work now. I'm not sure what to do. I'm thinking maybe I'll take the foam off and then see what the actual base structure looks like underneath this. Great. <laughs> I guess I'll go to Home Depot. Okay, so I'm back and I have my plywood along with an array of other different types of adhesives and a bunch of different things. Now, I'm just putting this down on the back of the chair and realizing that the chair is actually curved. So, there's that. But I'm thinking I'm just gonna put down like the adhesive and then clamp it to be curved and just say a prayer and hope that it's not gonna come disconnected and like wanna straighten out. Lightly dampen one surface with water. What? Good morning. So it is now the next day and I left this to dry. It said to let it dry. It fully cures in 24 hours. So that's what I did. So I'm just gonna take this off. Okay. Well, it definitely looks stuck, so that's a success. To reapply the foam, which I like ripped off, I'm going to use this spray adhesive, but I'm gonna do it outside just because I know that there's some fumes there. Apply a medium coat on both surfaces, so on the foam and on the backing, and then allow it to dry for one minute and then join. I did end up wearing a mask out there because the fumes were so strong. Oh, definitely don't recommend spraying it inside. Even outside, I felt like it was like a very strong smell. I'll do another question while we wait for that to dry. What is something on your to-do DIY list that you're really excited to do? So I won't spoil the surprise by telling you exactly what it is, but next week's video, I've been doing these two videos at the same time, this week, this video and the next video. And next week's video is probably my proudest DIY and the most crazy thing I've ever done. I spent a lot of time thinking about it and I'm looking at it right now and it just like, it's so good, it's so good. Oh, 
Okay, so I have my fabric here and I'm actually going to start with the bottom because I think the fabric needs to go on and then like tuck in and get stapled to the bottom. So I'm going to do the base part first. Let me just... So things just like love to not go my way. The base piece of fabric is not long enough to go and go all the way in and reach the plywood that's on the other side. It is long enough to tuck in, just not long enough um, to like reach the plywood. So I took these pieces, which were previously used on the chair, and I'm gonna stitch those on by hand. I was never the one to give up the ghost. No, I was so stuck high. Kept on playing my part, wanted to give up cause nothing was changing But with you it's so clear and now that you're here I see colors in every spectrum Cause I finally learned my lesson Cause you glue all the pieces back together Yeah you, you take all my wrongs and make them better Yeah you, you're making me wanna try forever And I feel so free now in case it's not 100% clear what I'm doing now, I'm actually working on the backrest of the chair and I'm taking the fabric that's in the front, I'm wrapping it around to the back and I'm stapling it in a straight line to the plywood that's now covered with foam. And I'm thinking out loud, we won't need nothing else. Good morning, it is a new day over here. The final step for this first chair is gonna be to fix the back of the chair. This is the back. I was initially going to do this method that had like tack strips and I bought them off of Amazon and everything. Perfect method if you have a wood base. Not the perfect method for what I had going on. Going to do an invisible hand stitch. I asked my mom to re-show me how to do an invisible stitch yesterday and she showed me on a Kleenex, okay? Thought I would answer a couple more questions. So, one question was, what do you do for a living outside of YouTube or is it your primary job? YouTube is now my primary job. I started doing it full time just a couple months ago, like three or four months ago. Before that, I did marketing. I think it's a blessing to be able to do YouTube full time. Oh, I have a good question. I keep getting it over and over and over on multiple different videos and that is, what am I doing with all my stuff and why did I have to start from scratch and why couldn't I bring all my stuff and why couldn't I rent a moving van? I did want to bring all my stuff, but I couldn't because the cheapest option was renting a U-Haul and it was going to cost $4,000 to rent the U-Haul, which is just too much money in my opinion. And instead, the stuff that was really valuable to me, like my dining table, for example, we stored it at my in-laws house. It wasn't my ideal outcome. I wanted to bring my stuff. Looks so professional. Rest with me. Close to curtain. Bruce and purple tea. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This chair is amazing. Ah! It's the perfect chair. It is perfect. I never thought I could do such a good, high quality reupholstery job. I know I had to hack some things together. I know I wanted it to be no sew and it ended up being hand sew a bit. But listen, it wasn't hard. The boucle fabric, top notch. This is the best chair. This is the best chair ever. <laughs> I love this. So happy that I got to make this. Forgetting exactly what I want. I'm so happy. <laughs> Yay!